so friends uh, uh, thank you very much uh, it is uh, really uh, an honor uh, to be uh, part of this program uh, with this great institution everybody know about this institution it's a great institution and we are grateful to the library professionals here who are hosting this program dr nimai and his team and uh, like uh, he has invited all the important source person who can really help you understand some of these concepts so uh, i will be talking about some of the uh, things about moocs and open educational resources and uh, i have been offering uh, this arpit uh, moocs program uh, as part of uh, like uh, uh, swam initiative and now uh, iit delhi is the first uh, library from iits and ic bangalore which has been uh, given a nptel course for the first time and it is a credit uh, three credit course and uh, anybody can take up the course like b tech student ab tech student and they can carry forward their uh, credits as well so i think uh, it took lot of time uh, to us to convince the authorities of the uh, nptel board that uh, library is an also library is also an important entity which plays a great role uh, in the uh, learning teaching research and extension of the uh, educational resources so okay let me go to the slide okay so please let me know if you are able to see my change slide that is coverage yes sir yes sir so if, if there are any disruptions or if there are any issues in changing the slide plus uh, please let me know because i am seeing only the uh, slide screen so you have to help me <coughs> okay so as part of this uh, today's topic some of the things which i am going to cover are like i will be talking about open educational resources i don't know uh, if someone has covered something uh, please excuse me if there is any repetition because i am not aware about uh, things so far have been covered so i will be starting with the background of uh, oer then we'll be discussing about its origin characteristics and who are the stakeholders and what are the different types of open educational resources we will also be talking about uh, oer landscape in india like learning repositories open education online courses online learning open textbooks etc and we will be trying to evaluate uh, some of the important or popular uh, open educational resources then we will also be touching uh, global oer initiatives uh, with reference to repositories textbooks uh, open courseware online courses learning platforms although this lecture is about open educational resources but for the reference of the uh, like learners or the the attendees uh, i will be also touching some of the paid repositories as well just for your information like coursera or maybe uh, some some other as well and of course uh, when you are making anything uh, available publicly there are some creative common uh, rights uh, which are involved in oer so i will be just uh, touching a few of the screens like these are the creative common rights uh, which are like given to any any resource which is available publicly like when you are seeing something uh, like wikipedia or youtube channel or something else somehow some co creative common right is also involved there we may not be aware but if you will see the uh, screen somewhere it might be uh, written there it is licensed under creative commons with cc by or whatever right has been given and uh, we will also be of course talking about some of the benefits uh, that you can draw uh, by using the uh, open educational resources so i think uh, as far as the background of uh, this oer is concerned uh, i think uh, the innovation uh, in the oer and the open courseware in the perhaps last two or three decade uh, has basically transformed the global education system Uh, and it is basically providing equitable access to quality education like earlier it was very difficult to get the good uh, higher education good content because uh, education was mostly uh, in physical format 
people used to uh, physically attend the classes uh, then they were able to to be trained in a really better way but with the introduction of open educational resources or open course fairs i think everyone can get a good education like studying in iits or isc bangalore is really very difficult but uh, with the help of nptel courses anybody can uh, like attend the lectures of iit professors or isc professor so this is the transformation that we are seeing globally uh, in india as well and if you uh, go uh, to the uh, un resolutions so article 26 of the Uni universal declaration of human rights declares that everyone has the right to education and that technical and professional education shall be made generally available so right from 1948 uh, the un has been directed the different countries to like uh, make the education available to everyone and with the introduction of this uh, uh, moocs and uh, like oers or open course where uh, this goal of the un is being realized in a fruitful manner and in india you know that there uh, the national knowledge commission uh, has already recommended that the problems of uh, educational material to a large extent can be reduced by oer on open access so now you can see that uh, you are able to access the video lectures of iit professors you are able to download their audios you are able to download their ppts you are able to uh, download their script and also you are able to download the questions or uh, the the some of the other content notes etc that are being uploaded by these people and with the introduction of this new education system that is nep 2020 it also promotes uh, education for all and government of india has taken several initiatives in this regard not now only but uh, these initiatives were started long back maybe 20 30 years back and you have many important government schemes which are helping in uh, this uh, area like sakshat enemy ict uh, and swam and swam prabha these are very popular portals through which a lot of courses are being offered lot of resources are uh, provided uh, to the people uh, globally free of cost and uh, of course uh, on a on a quality side or on a technical side you have nptel and other other moocs and other uh, resources which are available in public domain so i think uh, many of you might already be knowing what are oer open educational resources so as you can see on the uh, on my screen uh, with the uh, visuals or the images as well so oer are teaching learning and research material made available for free and with no or only limited restrictions to support access to knowledge so i think to support access to knowledge to support access to information or to support quality content or to support easy access or equitable or like uh, uh, free access uh, to the people who cannot attend the regular good colleges i think these initiatives are helping us a lot and uh, these are technology enabled in initiatives uh, and open provisions of education resources for consultation use and adaptation by community of users for non commercial purposes so basically most of the resources when we are accessing freely uh, someone is paying someone is supporting some someone is taking taking initiative for example if you are able to join or uh, enjoy free content on swam portal or swam prabha so of course uh, the government of india is paying a lot on Uh, creation of the content so uh, officially if you uh, go with the word open educational resources we could see uh, these words being used in 202002002 but i think uh, some of the initiative bar started very early like in 1994 uh, we could see that the uh, learning objects uh, is started appearing and people started using these learning objects then we could see uh, further development uh, in 1998 uh, with the open content 
And then in 2001, we could see uh, uh, learning uh, uh, creative commons or the creative commons started leaving their impact. And uh, one of the important development was in 2001, when the MIT, uh, one of the top institution of the world, started offering uh, these uh, open coursewares. And of course, this term uh, like was introduced in 2002 uh, by UNESCO. And UNESCO is the flag bearer for open educational resources. And it became popular from 2002. To understand <clears throat> further what is OER, so we need to understand what is not an OER. So if you like to see this table, it says what is open educational sources. So open educational sources are openly licensed. They are freely available and they are modifiable as well. It means you can modify as well. As far as the other related terms are concerned, uh, like free online resources under all right reserved copyright, uh, sometimes they are not openly licensed. But of course, they could be freely available and they could uh, not be modifiable as far as the rules, uh, rule book says. And materials available through the university library, of course, they are not uh, openly licensed. Uh, they may not be freely available. Uh, sorry, they may be freely available because anybody can come and like explore. But of course, you cannot modify. And as far as open access articles and monographs are concerned, uh, I mean, there is not 100% freedom as you have freedom for OER. So I think with this background, you may be able to characterize, you may be able to understand uh, what are the important features of OER. So as far as the important features or characteristics of OER are concerned, if you, we, we can uh, divide these characteristics into few of the categories like digital content, open license, conditions, freedom to or low cost. So uh, as far as the digital content of OER are concerned, you can uh, uh, do the free distribution. These are easy to customize. And as far as the open license is concerned, you can retain, reuse, revise, remix, or redistribute as far as uh, the content creators are concerned. As far as the conditions are concerned, uh, of course, uh, you can use uh, the open uh, licenses or creative common licenses uh, like attribution share alike non-commercial no modify so there are basically six type of creative common licenses which may be applied for uh, these open educational resources or MOOCs as well and you have a freedom to access copy use modify adopt or redistribute depending on the uh, conditions or the licensing of the open access content and of course, uh, as far as the cost is concerned, so the open access content or OER, uh, these are almost free uh, to use. Uh, you are free to uh, use. You can uh, use it just using your devices and your uh, connectivity. But of course, sometime uh, you need to pay some amount for appearing in the examination. For example, if you are a... Uh, you, if you have joined my uh, our NPTEL course, which is offered by me and Dr. Mohit Garg with my uh, IT Delhi library team, all our resource person from IT Delhi. So uh, you need to pay for uh, appearing in exam only, which is conducted by NTA, perhaps 1000 rupees or so. Otherwise, accessing the content, joining the course, even attempting the assignment, everything is free. So it is not like Netflix or Amazon Prime where you are uh, trying to access the content, whether movies or series, and you are paying something. You need not to pay anything as far as access is concerned. There is no subscription charges. But of course, uh, for like uh, for uh, exam or for certification, you need to pay a little bit money, which, which is sometimes reimbursable as well. So I think you understand who are the stakeholders of uh, these OER or MOOCs. Uh, like stakeholders are the people who are creating the content, uh, uh, maybe faculty members and staff. They are like creator of the content and they are user as well. Then there are civil society organizations which are creating and using as well. Then there are book bookstore and textbook publisher which are helping making the content available. 
then there are educators and librarians people like us who are not only uh, sometime creating the content but they are helping people to access those content to enjoy those content like uh, this lecture which is being organized by Bishwarthi. Uh, so i think uh, they are doing a good job by uh, making some of these concept popularized so the people who are attending today's lecture of course will share their thoughts with their, their other colleagues as well and this is how these things become popular and there are administrators and policy makers as well but of course the biggest uh, consumer of the uh, or the stakeholder of the open source content or oer or MOOCs is students so of course as far as the purpose is concerned the purpose may vary from uh, person to person sometimes we are attending the uh, uh, courses uh, because we need to fulfill some of the requirements for part of as part of our career admin scheme or we want to like uh, transfer our credit uh, by attending uh, some courses or also like we need to we want to learn some of the new concept without paying anything so the purpose of the oer is uh, basically teaching and learning and may include research as well oer provides a strategic opportunity to improve the quality of learning and knowledge sharing and to uh, to create and share educational content is one of the biggest goal because once you have created the content those content will remain in the repositories and people can use it uh, i could see that some of my arpit uh, videos have been seen more than 5000 times uh, the lectures which have been delivered on different uh, topics so i think they will remain in the repository and they will, the people will continue to use those and these like provide open access uh, to high quality digital education material like uh, when you are recording the content in a professional studio as part of your swam uh, program or maybe some swam courses so i think the quality of the content is not only good content wise but the production quality uh, the video quality the voice quality is also good and these are of course freely available in public domain so everybody can use it even the people who are not from india they can also enjoy and generally there is no legal issue and one can use it or share it as well if these are in public domain so these are five important r of oer which are like known to everyone like one of the important uh, component or r uh, of oer is retain you can keep the work forever once you have created a uh, work you can retain it forever you can reuse it uh, uh, for your own purposes and for the purposes of public good you can revise uh, it you can adapt modify or translate the work and uh, you can uh, remix uh, you can combine it with other uh, resources to make it new work and you can uh, redistribute is uh, you can also redistribute it and uh, uh, this is how i think uh, some of the things and this has become very popular like five hours of oers are generally asked in the question uh, in the in the selection committees and some some other places as well so i think uh, uh, we generally talk about oer and moocs uh, but some sometimes we are unable to make out like what are the different types of oer we are popularly knowing about the courses, but uh, sometimes may, we may not expand our thinking that there are different type of segregations. So if we uh, talk about segregation, about the OER, we can like segregate uh, some of the OER as textbooks. We can also uh, segregate or one of the component is courses, uh, the general courses, then course material, then interactive simulations and public domain books, which are available in public domain. Then there could be audio books. There could be different modules for different purposes. There could be some open access books and there could be videos. So these are some of the types of OER. There could be some others as well. Okay. So as far as the OER initiatives are concerned, different initiatives have been taken in different ways. Uh, so these are some key types of open educational initiative, not by the name of organization, but by the type. For example, some of the open textbook initiatives uh, includes uh, like digital textbooks, 
flexible textbook format, individual plus team authored content, and author contributed mainly at a college level. And then other, uh, other key type is open course repositories. So these repositories may include multimedia full courses, mixed media, or maybe some managed team development or some other instructor guidelines. And another type could be open object repositories, which may include individual learning objects or maybe author contributed uh, content at all levels or some other uh, instructions as well. And then could be there could be open course where projects where we have digitized classroom lecture material or maybe uh, some some other design and media types. So when we uh, think about global OER, so as as, as I discuss in few of the uh, previous slides, so there could be different type of segregation. Like we can we could divide. Uh, uh, these type of content under OER repositories, under open access textbooks, uh, under open courseware. So here we are talking about specific uh, like institutions, in specific type of like uh, organization which are offering these type of uh, OERs uh, internationally. For example, if we talk about OER repositories, so there are many uh, popular OER repositories like Merlot or Oasis. So we will be discussing in detail about these uh, repositories or like open textbooks, for example, like open stacks or Milne open textbooks or open courseware offered by MIT or maybe Kyoto University or maybe University of Mass Church or maybe University of Utah. So I think uh, these are some of the uh, like segregations of global OERs under OER repositories under open access textbooks or open courseware. So I will be sharing some of the screenshot with the help of those screenshots. I think it will give you an idea and whenever you are free and if you are interested in this content, you can explore it uh, as per your uh, convenience. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> so as discussed, uh, uh, like UNESCO is the flag bearer for this OER movement. Uh, so UNESCO basically started this movement and is, is UNESCO is making uh, open access more popular. They are supporting as a project as well and they are supporting different initiatives. They are supporting uh, the travel as well. Uh, they are supporting the individual who want to contribute in this domain. And there are some of the people in India who are very like very much contributing. I don't want to name some of my friends are involved with UNESCO projects and uh, like they are traveling a lot. They are very well funded and they are creating the contents and they are helping UNESCO uh, to reach to the uh, wider audience. So I think this is a uh, Wikiversity main page and this this is very important uh, project. Uh, by the Wiki uh, Media Foundation, uh, and it is deported to learning resources, learning uh, projects, and research for use at all levels. The, the content uh, at, created under this project are uh, very popular, and uh, this is the main page uh, uh, of the Wikiversity. So uh, some of the other popular OER repositories uh, about which I will be talking about are OER Commons, Merlot, Oasis, Open Course Library, or OCL, then Teaching Commons, OER MetaFinder, and Pool uh, for Ed. So, as far as the uh, one of the uh, important uh, OER repository is concerned, is OER Commons, and uh, it was launched in two thousand seven by uh, Knowledge Management in Education uh, (ISKME), and it includes uh, all levels of learning materials from content providers ranging uh, just two months ago. yeah so it includes all levels of learning material from content providers ranging from university to public domain so it has content uh, which uh, helps uh, uh, the universities and the uh, student directly 
uh, from its website. And this is basically the landing page of the OER Commons. And you can see here that they, they explore, create, and collaborate as far as the open access uh, content is concerned. Another important repository is Merlot, and it was started in 1997. It is a very old uh, repository uh, by California State University Center for Distributed Learning. And it is a curated collection of free and open online teaching, learning, and faculty development services. And it has a lot of uh, content. Now it could, uh, it may be having over 1 lakh learning resources. And the beauty of this project is that it reviews the content to check the suitability for retention in the collection. It is just like your beading out project in the library. So whatever content have become outdated or are not required, those contents are removed by the uh, Merlot repository. So this is uh, the landing page or a screen of uh, Merlot, uh, uh, which you can explore whenever you have time. Another important project is Oasis, and uh, uh, it's basically uh, education search tool developed by SUNY uh, Genesis Milne Library. So uh, the library people, the librarians uh, there in Milne Library have contributed, and it includes almost all type of material like textbooks, courses, course material, different modules, audiobooks, etc. And uh, this is the like uh, the screen shot the landing page or the first page of the OSS when you will uh, be logged in. So another important resource, international resource is Open Course Library, which is a collection of shareable course material. And it includes like syllabi, maybe readings or some assessment things. And, uh, uh, and it has been again created with the help of uh, librarians as well. Apart from others, librarians have also contributed in this project. And uh, uh, these courses, OCL courses and materials have undergone uh, testing for accessibility and have been designed using industry standard quality uh, rubric. And uh, this is the landing page uh, of this uh, open course library. So another important uh, uh, component internationally is teaching commons. Uh, which brings together high quality open educational resources from uh, different leading colleges and universities. And it includes uh, content like textbooks or other, other multimedia materials. And educators and researchers can use the teaching common to discover uh, teaching materials, adopt content for their courses, and uh, they can create and share their own work as well. And this is how it looks like the teaching commons. And this is OER Meta Finder, which helps to find open educational resources. And it is a basically search engine of uh, dozens of open access uh, educational databases. And uh, it, it launches a real time simultaneous search across about 22 different uh, sources of open education material. Uh, and uh, you can uh, like, you can use it like a discovery platform or the search that it is such type of engine uh, which basically brings you result from uh, these open educational materials. This is uh, the screenshot uh, of uh, the Mason OER Meta Finder. Then another important uh, uh, one is cool for Ed and it provides access to free and open e-textbooks course material, online courses, open access journals, and articles. And it provides the hard, high quality, affordable, digital open textbooks. And uh, it is also known as California Digital Open Source Library. So I think uh, librarians are uh, like uh, contributing a lot in these efforts. It is not only the faculty members or the IT people who are like helping in creating the content, but librarians are, uh, are uh, always ahead of others. This is the landing page of Cool for Ed. Now we will talk about open uh, textbooks, which are also part of this lecture. So I think uh, most of you might be understanding what is open textbooks. And if you're not, 
then you can see that open textbook is basically a textbook license under an open copyright license and made available online to be used freely by student, teachers and members of the uh, public. These are basic questions which are asked in you, uh, from you in interview boards as well, like what is the difference between open textbook or a normal uh, like uh, online textbooks. So these uh, open textbooks are created by educators, reviewed by educators, contributes to successful learning outcomes. An open textbook is basically adaptable. An open textbook is structured and is shareable as well. <coughs> so these are some of the... <coughs> Sorry. So open textbook, uh, uh, these are some of the examples from the open textbook, so like directory of open, textbook, open access books, which is very popular, like uh, directory of open access journals. Then others are like open stacks, Milne open textbooks, open textbooks, open Oregon State open textbook, Sailor Academy open textbooks, free textbooks, BC campus open ed. So I will be sharing some of the details of these uh, open textbook uh, sites or repositories or service providers. So one of the important component under open textbook is directory of open access books. Uh, and uh, it was established by OAPN uh, Foundation in 2012 in close cooperation with the directory of open access journals. And uh, DOAB indexes and uh, provide access to many scholarly peer reviewed open access books and helps user to find trusted open access book publishers and it has a lot of like uh, I have mentioned figure 62,000 but it could be more as well as of now peer-reviewed books. This is the landing page uh, of the directory of open access books. Another important one is open access uh, which was started by Rice University in 1999 and it has high quality peer reviewed content, uh, the textbooks, uh, which are absolutely free online and uh, uh, low cost to print as well. So this is the landing page of the OpenStax CNX website. So Milne uh, is another important open uh, textbook uh, website, which publishes high quality uh, content and are available from this website, which you can explore. Then next in this category is open uh, textbooks. Uh, the name itself is open textbook and it is a comprehensive reformatory that points to open textbook by a variety of authors and publishers. And this is the like uh, web page of this open textbook library. Uh, and this is open Oregon state open textbooks. Uh, and they basically deal in some particular uh, uh, subject not uh, covering everything. Uh, some of the disciplines covered are language and linguistics, uh, etc. And this is the landing page of Open Educational Resources, uh, the main page. Uh, Sailor Academy is uh, another uh, important open textbook uh, repository which indexes the educational resources on major disciplines, uh, including humanities, social sciences, and some of the science disciplines. And this is the main page of the uh, website, uh, which you can explore and you can like make use of the freely available open textbooks from here. And uh, this is another one, free textbooks uh, for the same purpose. And this is the main page of the uh, website. This is BP BC campus open textbook uh, uh, details. And this is the website of open uh, textbook BC campus website. And this is the Ed Textbooks website, which uh, provides you textbooks basically. And uh, uh, they try to reach to larger audience uh, on the basis of their content. And this is the page, how it looks like. And uh, now we will talk about another important component of like uh, uh, open educational resources, uh, which is open courseware. So earlier we, in the previous slide, we were discussing about uh, open textbooks. Now we are discussing about open course pairs. So open course pairs are free and open digital publications of, how uh, of high quality for college and university level education purposes. These materials are basically organized and courses uh, are often include uh, uh, like planning materials, 
functions and evaluation tool as well as thematic content and uh, they may consist uh, primarily uh, primarily teaching material used by university faculty members and also uh, used in the regular university courses and uh, as discussed these are free and openly licensed accessible to anyone anytime uh, using internet so some of the major open coursewares include uh, i think some of you might be knowing that mit coursewares are very popular then you also have carnegie mellon's open learning initiative you have uh, courses from harvard you have courses from hokkaido open yale michigan kyoto university and many more so i will will we will be covering some of these uh, screens uh, to like uh, to help you remember some of these popular courses because visuals helps us in remembering the thing easily <clears throat> So of course, uh, MIT was the flag bearer as far as the open course wares are concerned, and they were one of the first who started uh, like open courses uh, in 2001 itself, and they provides uh, free access to the content of all undergraduate or grade level courses, and uh, they they have millions of subscribers, and I think India is one of the top subscriber to the MIT courses. Uh, this is the uh, screen uh, through which you can explore the MIT courses. And this is Carnegie Mellon's uh, Open Learning Initiative. You can also make use of the courses offered through Carnegie Mellon University, which are free. And uh, this is from Harvard. So Harvard also offers some of the professional and life learning courses. You can explore this. Uh, you have uh, uh, you have an opportunity to join online by sitting in India as well. And this is from uh, Hokkaido University, Open Coursewares. And this is from Yale. And this is from Michigan. Uh, this is from Kyoto University. This is from Doshisha. And this is from like uh, uh, UMass Boston. And this is uh, these are the Utah State University courses offered by the libraries of that university and these are like uh, uh, content available from open educational consortium which is a global network for open education so uh, uh, let's now talk about some of the other uh, related things which are like online courses or learning most of these courses are paid courses uh, and costly as well but there are some offers and free courses as well which you can explore like you all know that the edx or coursera or maybe khan academy uh, these courses are paid courses so today we have uh, assembled here online uh, discussing about oer and free courses and moocs but just for re your reference i want to like uh, uh, discuss about these important uh, uh, online courses as well, which are mostly paid courses, but sometimes there are offered. For example, there were offered during COVID from Coursera, uh, through which our student could join uh, these courses freely. And there are also some short duration or offer courses, which you can explore freely as well. So I think uh, one of the most popular paid courses uh, with free offers for some of the smaller courses are from Coursera. And edX courses are also very popular. I think most of you might be knowing about Khan Academy, where the important courses are available for your kids. And Udemy is also popular uh, with their uh, great courses. And this is Class Center, which is offering you a uh, good number of courses, uh, whether these are certifications, whether these are uh, sort of uh, long duration courses. Future Learning, another popular one which is gaining a lot of importance uh, uh, in, in recent past. And uh, now uh, we will talk about uh, OER in India. We have discussed about the international projects and uh, those projects are accessible to us as well. I think uh, let's try to focus more on our Indian things. Okay, so like OER initiatives in India have focused on increasing the count of uh, OER in higher education because India is a big country. We have a lot of population. Uh, we all cannot attend the colleges in person. 
because of many reasons like we are not getting the admission we all are not getting the admission in the colleges of choice or we cannot sometime move to other cities for higher education or we may have financial constraint or we have to support our family or because of being some other issues like uh, parents don't want to uh, may not be wanting send their girl child to some remote lo locations so i think in this way oer in india is becoming uh, very popular and many e learning products and services are available to uh, even school students as well and uh, these type of initiatives helps in lifelong learning and helps in continuous professional development so <clears throat> some of the major initiative that uh, have been taken uh, mostly by government of india uh, as far as open educational resources or moocs are concerned <clears throat> are from like consortium for educational communication or through swam or nptel platform and you might be aware about e part sala e pg part sala and other projects as well so we will be touching these aspect uh, quickly so that you are able to understand i know i am giving you too much content but the purpose of con giving too much content is not to make you expert here but just to help you that these are the important development in moocs and oer which you can explore if you are further interested in joining any course or exploring some contents so these are the logos of some of the important initiatives that those have been taken uh, from government of india or they are uh, like uh, autonomous bodies so one of the uh, important uh, like uh, institution in this regard is uh, cc uh, Uh, which is basically an inter university center set up by the university grant commission like our inflipnet and uh, it works as a national coordinator for undergraduate moocs and 11 swam prabha dts channels cc has one of the largest repositories of digital educational content in the country and cc repositories include lot many videos now it could be more than 50000 videos video program and 24000 e content modules and it provide access to lot many resources for all the discipline whether it is humanities social sciences or maybe engineering and technology so this is the website of consortium for educational com uh, communication which is basically a you can say flag bearer or a coordinating agency for different type of courses of course everyone know about swam So swam is not a single name it has a full form like the full form of swam is a study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds and it is basically an academic online platform uh, sponsored by the ministry of education and the courses delivered through swam are available free of cost to the learners and some nominal fee you need to pay for appearing in the exam because nta is conducting those exam so the fee is either 500 generally or 1000 that's it so uh, swam have uh, many uh, coordinating center at a national level for different type of courses like aict nptel or ugc <clears throat> so this is the main page of swam uh, which is uh, offering all the courses whether these are arpit courses or nptel courses you can see the logos here uh, just me yeah pointer so you can see the logos here uh, with who are participating in different type of uh, these programs important institutions like aict cc ignu i am bangalore ncert nation institute of open schooling nittr nptel which is coordinated by iit madras and then ugc so see, this is the <clears throat> landing page of swam uh, program and from here you can search different type of courses uh, like uh, you can search uh, upcoming courses you can search arpit courses you can search uh, nptel courses and other courses uh, so uh, being in iit delhi we are like more concerned with nptel and uh, it is basically a program which was started by seven old iits uh, and ic bangalore it is basically a group of eight uh, great institutions and they provide certification for students 
and the 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 credit the students are earning those credit can be transferred uh, in their regular courses like btech mtech msr phd etc and it has lot of content and there are lot of viewers of this course as well this is specifically the nptel's uh, landing page which the screenshot i just took today itself and these are some sort of certification sort of type of certificate that the nptel is providing on completion of uh, uh, the course uh, with proctored exam conducted by the uh, nta and this is ep e part sala uh, i think you might be aware that e part sala is a portal or app developed by the uh, one of the unit of the ncrt and it includes uh, textbooks uh, for class 1 to 12 it has audio uh, visual resources it has other other com uh, content as well and this is the website from where you can uh, access the e part sala content this is not epg part sala epg part sala is a different uh, portal so you can access the content of uh, e part sala uh, through app you can download the app from google play on your android device and uh, this EPT, e part sala program uh, content are also accessible through another important app, which is a government app uh, through which you can uh, use different uh, uh, resources, which is known as Umang. So Umang is a general app which can help you explore the content of e part sala as well. And this is another one, as I discussed, EPG part sala. So EPG part sala is a different program which provides content to the postgraduate student in in all the disciplines and uh, uh, the content are available as audio or uh, video or the content are also available as pdf and or the text content this is the epg part sala portal uh, from where you can like download lot of content you can see there must be somewhere library information sign yeah library information sign so 395, uh, you can say, lectures are available in library information science as well for uh, BLIS, MLIS students or for those who are like, who want to update their knowledge, who want to explore content uh, for the library professional who are serving as well. So uh, we all have contributed in this program when this was started. So our lectures are also available in e -part, EPG part sala. So another important repository of open education sources is again from NCRT, uh, which is known as NROER. And it has uh, some other type of content like some e-resources or some, some other audio, video, or visual or images as well. The number is also good. So this is the like landing page of that repository. So Diksa is again another important uh, program uh, from the NCRT and it can be accessed by learners uh, across the country uh, in different languages. Uh, currently we have over 18 plus languages. So if you are not able to understand content in English or Hindi, you can understand in Bangla, you can understand in uh, Tamil, Telugu or some other languages. So this is the website of Diksha. Of course, NDLI, you all are aware, National Digital Library of India has been developed by IIT Kharagpur as a project under Ministry of Education. And it also offers a lot of content in public domain. It has more than 70 different languages from a variety of disciplines. And it goes almost all the important uh, uh, languages and subjects. And you can explore uh, openly accessible content from NDLI as well. So this is the website of National Digital Library of India, which you can explore for some of the content, or at least they have uh, provided hyperlinks to other resources of uh, the different institutions of the government of India through their search window. Of course, NCRT platform, apart from providing different type of content, if your kids, if your students are interested in uh, like exploring the con school content uh, then the uh, textbooks from class 1 to uh, 12 are available here in in all the three important language hindi english and urdu and this is the website 
of NCRT providing uh, textbook in PDF format from class 1 to 12. So if your son or daughter is not able to have the physical copy of a book, you can always download from here. You can get it printed as well for study. Sampraba is another important entity, uh, which is a group of basically 34 DTH channels. So your lecture is recorded on a particular topic and you are, uh, that is uploaded, that is broadcasted on uh, the channel, DTH channel, and that remains in the repository as well. So apart from seeing uh, on the DTH channel of the television, you can later on explore through the website as well. So I'm happy 10 of my lectures on different aspects of library information science have already been broadcasted and they are accessible, accessible from the repository. Uh, this is the website uh, from where you can access the uh, video lectures of uh, all the uh, subject experts. EGAN course has a very important component. Like if you want to prepare notes, if you want to prepare some paper, something else, so then you can uh, visit the eGAN course and you can uh, see the content of BELIS, MLIS, PGD, LAN, et cetera, uh, for library science uh, on the repository. You can download those, you can consult those. And I think IGNU's content for teaching, research and extension are one of the best. If you are teaching BLIS, MLIS or some other library science courses, I think this is the website from where you can get the relevant content. And this is the uh, like web page of eGAN course. There is another project known as OSCAR. Uh, the full form is Open Source Course Bear Animations Repository, which uh, provides a basically web, uh, learning objects. And these learning objects uh, are in uh, different domain, but especially focusing on science and engineering. Uh, at the school level and the student and teachers can like download these and uh, use it as well. This is the website. Then earlier uh, the the open schooling was known as as a, as a schooling body. So which has expanded its scope and it is known as now National Institute of Open Schooling and they provides lot of content. Uh, which are basically self-learning materials completely covering all the different aspects which are important for uh, the kids, for the student up to 10 plus 2 level. And this is the back page of that National Institute of Open Schooling. Okay. And then uh, another important uh, like component is FOSI, that is free library and open source software for education project. And this promotes uh, uh, some of the important uh, component in the open access mode uh, with the help of Ministry of uh, Commun Information and Communication Technology. And it helps improve the quality of education and research. And a uh, lot of important uh, proprietary or uh, other, other things have been explored through this portal. And this is the website of this FOSI. Then apart from like general uh, institution or the, the institution which are offering for the whole nation as a as a central body, the individual institutions are also offering different type of courses. For example, I've taken few examples from Indian Institute of Technology Delhi where I am working. So this is the website of our educational technology services center through which we are offering different type of courses like uh, I offered ARPIT course uh, using ETSC uh, services. Now, uh, IIT Delhi Central Library is also offering uh, another course uh, on open source uh, or science communication using this center only uh, through the NPT uh, platform. So this was my earlier course uh, known as ARPIT, uh, Emerging Trends and Technologies in Library Information Services. So I offered two editions of this course and every time I was having more than 3000 learners. So this was possible with the help of our, this center, this institution, uh, like ETSC cell of IIT Delhi, where these courses were produced and then were offered uh, through the uh, SWAM platform. So uh, like if you want to uh, offer such course, there are some bodies which are identified. For example, in my case, 
uh, when I offered this uh, Arpit uh, course, which is known as Atlas Moves. So I was also having somebody which were some people who were assisting me. So this was my academic council of the course uh, uh, involving some senior people like Dr. Jagdish Arora, Dr. Ramesh Gaur, Dr. G. Mahesh, Dr. Tari Kashtap, Dr. Anoop as well. So I think when we are trying to offer some courses, we are following some standards, we are taking help of some senior professional. That is why, that is how we are able to deliver the uh, quality content. And this is just for your reference, this is the dashboard, how I was managing this course, how I was managing the different modules, course outline, content, everything using the dashboard provided by uh, SWAM uh, platform how the instructors were uh, involved, how the people who were the people who were helping us in delivering this course. And this is how the discussion forum works. So when you are uh, offering any any program, any MOOC program or any other online uh, thing, uh, you are maintaining some discussion forum as well so that you are able to address all the queries, all the important questions uh, from the people. So this is how we were responding to the people using our discussion form. Same is the platform that we are using for our IT Delhi's uh, science communication course offered through NPTEL. So like this is how we are able to uh, make announcement using the uh, portal, uh, SWAM portal. And this is how the YouTube channels are managed and are publicly accessible. So even if you are not able to join the course still, being in public domain, you can still access our content. And you can see all the great topics have been covered by all the important and uh, the top professionals of the country on different uh, topics. So this is our current uh, uh, course from Central Library IT Delhi, Science Com Communication, Research Productivity and Data Analytics using open source software. And you can see we received very good response uh, to 2,584 people have uh, registered this course, the registration has already been closed and 480 people have already registered for exam as well. So these courses are basically free. You need to pay if you are appearing in the exam because the exam is conducted by NTA. So you need to pay 1000 rupees if you want to appear in exam and if you want some certification. So IT Delhi uh, library is the first uh, library uh, which has been given this course uh, on uh, in the from among the IITs or ISC because uh, there is always a conflict of interest whether we are faculty or not can we uh, offer the courses we are a service professional so there were lot of communication there were lot of objections whether this course has been cleared by senate or academic council or whether this is the course which is already offered in some form so after like one and a half years efforts Finally, this course was approved. Now, this course can be taken up by any any person in ITs as well, like B.Tech student, M.Tech student, M.S. or Ph.D. student. So this is uh, for IT Delhi Central Library. This is a proud moment that we could uh, get this course and uh, anybody uh, completing this course in our institution as well, uh, they can take their three credit forward. This is a three credit hours course. So I think uh, even if you have not joined this course, that's okay. But if you are interested in the content that are offered through lectures, PPTs, and uh, the text as well, uh, then of course you can visit the YouTube channel. You can listen to the lectures. You can download the PPTs. You can download the text content uh, that is freely available. But of course you can you cannot access the assignments. You cannot access the questions because you have not joined. Joining was free, uh, but examination, you have to pay 1000 rupees. So I think uh, if you have created good contents, good MOOCs, good videos, good things, and if it is available in public domain, it is always good to provide access to the content through the popular website. For example, we have provided access to our content, ARPIT content, uh, through our IT Delhi Central Library's website. Here you can see, so you can directly go to the video through these links. You can download the PDFs as well. 
So I think there are about 44 lectures as part of this uh, ARPIT course uh, offered by IIT Delhi Library. So I think if you are if you want to update your knowledge on any topic, if you want to prepare a paper, if you are you want to prepare for the exam or maybe for interview, I think you will find all the important lectures delivered by all the great persons and which are available here. So you can explore these free resources. Okay, so these are some of the other uh, relevant projects which are uh, like popular globally. For example, you might be knowing about uh, interactive uh, internet archive or project Gutenberg. Wikipedia is again a very popular, uh, like uh, open, uh, openly accessible content provider, uh, Creative Commons and uh, Hathi Trust, you are also aware. Million Books Project is also very popular. So these are some of the other globally acclaimed project uh, which you can explore for updating your knowledge or you can take advantage of all these uh, resources. Of course, uh, when it comes to OER, uh, then comes to Creative Commons as well. And it is basically an international active non-profit organization that provides free licenses for creators to use when making their work available to the public. So when you are making your work available to the public, generally, uh, some creative common right is attached to that. Either you are using the symbols or you are using the words like uh, CC by CC by SA, CC by ND and something like that. And this is the website of the Creative Commons official website where you can explore all these content. So I think you might be aware that these are the Creative Commons symbols like uh, the first uh, right is CC by and the last one or the toughest one is CC by NC and D. So uh, <clears throat> starting from here, it gives more freedom to make the content accessible and uh, to reuse it. And the last one, CC by NC and D, it, it uh, restricts some of the freedoms. Uh, it restricts some of the uh, misuses. Okay, so these are all the description of uh, different creative common right. Like uh, when you are seeing what is CC by, you can understand it allows others to copy, display, remix, and redistribute the work as long as they provide appropriate credit to the creator. So these are different like uh, uh, facilities or freedom that, that those have been given as part of the different creative common rights. So if you want to evaluate whether a uh, OER is good or not, you can evaluate on the basis of some of these parameters like uh, clarity, comprehensibility, uh, comprehensibility and readability. And you can also uh, evaluate on the basis of content and technical accuracy. And you can evaluate on the basis of adaptability and modularity as well. So of course, there are various benefits of using the OER for to faculty and students, as you can see on my screen, like you have cost savings, you are, you are free to access online content, you have access to quality education, a student gets an opportunity to engage with uh, content providers or uh, even if you have completed your course, the content are still available, which is not available in the regular education system. A student can read up on the courses uh, before time before attending the classes as well, the contents are available and a student can be safe in the knowledge that their course material will not evaporate. So you are able to access before like giving the exam and you can access after your exam as well because the content will be available forever and you can like uh, customize, you can add those content in your personal library as well. And in the same way, there are so many benefits uh, to faculty members because uh, you gain personally, you get a reputation. And of course, they add to your profile as well. They give benefit in your career advancement. They help you in your selections as well. And of course, uh, you are invited as a resource person, uh, as a committee members, uh, you get good projects as well. And people recognize your value as a, as a professional. This is UGC notification for uh, one of the ARPIT uh, course, which was declared at one of the equivalent to uh, career advancement uh, scheme, like 
if you attended this such a course, I'm not saying this course, mine course only. So you, if you attended such a course, that may be considered as one of the equivalent of the refresher courses. And uh, this is how you can uh, transfer the credit uh, from uh, one course to your regular stream as well. And after this new education policy, these themes have become more easy. Okay, so these are the formats of the, if you want to develop a course, uh, uh, there are some standard formats which are given, like uh, how the course layout is to be prepared. And uh, like uh, if you want to develop a NPTEL course, if you are eligible to submit a NPTEL course proposal, this is how you can sub, uh, submit proposal like course title, discipline, duration, number of times you have taught this course. These are all the information which are asked while you are submitting courses. And uh, of course, there are so much additional material or resources you have to give as a reference to support your justification for offering the course. So I have taken content from different sources. I have taken help from different people. I have taken help from uh, the uh, resources which are uh, developed by my colleague in IIT Delhi. So with the help of all those things, I have created this presentation and I wish to acknowledge all those resources or resource person or my central library or IIT Delhi as an institution. So thank you very much uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity, uh, Dr. Nimai and his team. And if there are any questions, I am open to question for next five minutes uh, because we have a IT librarians meeting uh, at 12 o'clock. So I am the host. I have to start the meeting at least five minutes uh, before. So if there are any quick questions, uh, I can take those questions. Thank you, sir for your nice and very informative session. So now the floor is open to have any question, please raise your hands or you may put your query in the chat box. So as far as sharing is concerned, I think uh, this uh, uh, video with uh, slides may already be available on my channel, I have to check it. You can just explore uh, this channel that I have post uh, given uh, in the chat, YouTube channel. So I think uh, when the presentation is available in video format, the slides are also visible there. But still, uh, if you are not satisfied with that video, I can share these slides as well. Okay. So uh, there is a question, can you mention any publication platform? So as far as the publication platform is concerned, I think it is up to you to decide where you want to publish. There are different types of publication platform, like uh, I don't know what are you talking about. Like there are preprint uh, repositories where you can upload your paper. That is also publication. You can also upload on uh, postprint repositories. And there are uh, open, uh, open review systems as well, where you can upload your paper and paper people can independently review and they can post their comments about your paper as well. For example, if you are like uh, uploading something on ResearchGate, uh, that is also getting citations. And uh, as far as the one of the top database, uh, uh, Scopus is concerned, uh, they have also started uh, indexing some of the popular repositories, for example, archive, medical archive, bio archive, etc. So apart from like giving citations, they are also giving you automatic score. Like how many people have used it? How many people have downloaded it? How many people have referred it? So I think uh, 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 Maiti, this is the answer for your question. And uh, if there is any other question, are Coursera courses UGC recognized? I am not sure. Uh, but of course, Coursera courses are uh, like recognized by people. Mean, means if you have done any Coursera course, then you have a lot of value attached to that course. So uh, you need recognition of UGC when you want to make use of that course as qualification for applying to different positions. 
So Coursera is not offering you a degree course. So I think uh, it is just like a course uh, that you have attended for enhancing your knowledge. And uh, as far as the career advancement scheme is concerned, if it is written like a course of at least duration of five days or 10 days, so of course that will be counted. But I can't say about UGC and what type of recognition you are talking about. <laughs> So I think uh, from chat, I have covered all the questions. If there are any further questions, please let me know. So if sir, there are no, yeah. Uh, very helpful presentation, sir. Expressive. Thank you very much, sir, for your information and uh, uh, request to share the presentation, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Sure, uh, but uh, please explore uh, my channel uh, first there. I think it should be there, uh, but anyway, I can share as a PPT as well. Just drop me an email. Uh, I have already given my email there in the chat. Okay. okay Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, can you please allow me to leave now? I have another meeting. Sir, I think there is no question, sir. So we can wind up this session here, sir. So, <clears throat> okay. So, I think no question. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again for uh, accepting our invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.